What's up everybody, a spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on the Space Engineers Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Vistagul. Vistagal? Vistagul? I don't really know. Um, assault Carrier. I usually try and give three pronunciations. One of them's got to be close. <laughs> it's probably something completely different. So, as the name implies, this is an assault carrier. So, it assaults and carries. Um... So yeah, it's actually capable of carrying quite a few. I think it's something like, if my remember, if my memory serves, it's something like twelve or something of the fighters. It's pretty crazy. Uh, we'll check the launch pads and stuff. It's also got some double layers with certain spots having heavy armor over top of things for protect. It's it's pretty intense. There's a lot going on here, um, as well as there's a lot of turrets. And I don't know why, but I find this back part. To be really cool. I really like this thruster wing type setup back here with little uh, nodes off to the back type of thing. I don't know why. I just find that part really fascinating and unique looking. All right. Obviously, given that this is a fighter carrier, finding the door is not really a big problem. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of them. So we've got one, two, three, four. Five, five on each side, right? If I counted right, who knows? One, two, three, four, and five. Yeah. So there's ten. I thought it was twelve or something like that, but ten looks like. Um. Oh, these actually are for drones. So maybe eight fighters and. It might be eight fighters and two drones. I'm thinking. Had two. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Landing pad heavy duty. So that's not okay. So it's six fighters, two heavy duty pads, or you could use the heavy duty pads for seven and eight as they're implied. Landing pad seven and eight. So minimum would be six fighters, two heavy pads, and two drone pads. I guess there's also repair bays here, which I think is a cool touch. I love the detail and stuff in it though, it actually feels like a real lived-in kind of hangar. Like there's a lot going on here with different little bits and bobs. Um, got the oxygen tanks over there. Not really sure what these pads are for. Lights and connector. Okay, got it. So there's lights and connectors for everything over there. No fire zone. All pilots, please deactivate all ships after landing in landing mode. Okay. Trigger airlock, hangar blast doors all. Let's go ahead and close those up. Which is the front ones as well. I did read... Oh. I don't know where they are, though. I did read that there's a double layer of them, or something to that effect, for heavier protection. I don't know if there's another layer of heavy armor or blast doors that comes out after that. I wasn't really outside when we did that. Uh, hangar lockdown. Activate and deactivate. And the trigger airlock. I'm trying to follow the rules. This one says it waits about four seconds and then the door opens. And after that it should auto do what it's supposed to. So we're going to test that out. Mainly because, yeah, I mean... We always tend to break things. I think I might have done it on the wrong side. Because now it turned red. It waited a minute and then it turned red. Uh, I was probably supposed to go in and then trigger it. Because this has been longer than four seconds, so let's do it this way. I'm trying to preserve it and keep it working right. Uh, trigger... So now that it's opened and closed... Okay, so now it's filling and depressurizing automatically. That's cool. I don't know what script that's using, but that's pretty neat. Cargo and escape pod. Four escape pods ready. Oh, hello. Little, um, I guess security drone? That's kind of cool. And creepy. Who goes this way? door. That's not a sign. That just says hangar door. I'm a knucklehead. Um, I saw text. I thought it was a sign. 
lights for the main air vents, ship locked down. I kind of want to try that just to see what it does. We have a cool table set up here. I really like this kind of stuff. Uh, med bay bridge and crew rooms and crew. Co oh, wait, no, that's. I'm I'm having trouble reading the signs. Maintenance restricted access. Crew quarter. I'm guessing med bay bridge and crew rooms are that way since it also says crew quarters. Uh, hangar command. Ooh, like this. Like it. Like it. It's working for me. Um, yeah, so we have a cool hangar. Oh, that's neat. There's a hangar door there. For command protection, apparently. And we have a view down there. For what point and purpose? Not really sure, but, you know, it's there. What we got here? Air vents, door hangar controls, lights, and welders for the repair bay. That's all well and good. Um, what was down here? I kind of want to make sure we get the least important things out of the way and then start moving more towards important stuff. So, this is the armory, I guess. Nope. Rifles and ammo. Uh, cargo and escape pods. Let's check that out. Needs to cargo bay. Store escape pods, connectors escape pods. Oh, okay. So you can get in these, open the doors, get in those, and they drop. That's pretty cool. Um, blast doors. Oh, same thing. Okay, and this is. I guess. Wait, where were, where were we? Welcome aboard. I guess this is the rear hangar. That's kind of cool, actually. I really like that. That's a neat idea. Kind of has a... Almost like a, a tread kind of feel to it, where it's like that's where your rover goes. Maybe that is a ground... A ground transport bay. I'm not really sure. Because I thought it said storage. Or cargo bay. But I didn't see the cargo in there. Unless I just missed it. I could have. It's not really unlike me. Um... And then this goes to storage for components and productions. Okay. That's cool. And then that goes to the hangar where we came from. Okay. So now that we're back on the same page, let's head into maintenance. Uh-oh. It's supposed to seal automatically. It wasn't my fault. I didn't do it. We have this little maintenance area type thing for all your reactors and hydrogen tanks. I don't think it goes any further than this, though. It doesn't look like. So that's probably maintenance for one side or something to that effect. Okay. Med bay. So we have cryo chambers here with medical as well. So they can keep an eye on you while you sleep. Uh, view of the reactor, it looks like. Main reactors, batteries. Okay. Crew rooms and captain's quarter. No entry. No one's allowed in the captain's quarters. I think the description mentioned... Uh, I want to say this is a nine passenger or a nine crew ship. It's got a view of the reactors. It's on private, private balcony. Bed, not balcony, bed. Private bed. Balcony. Air vents for the captain's quarters, lights, door, uh, door quarters. I guess that's the sign outside. Captain's log. That's cool. Airlock for. Oh, he's got his own private escape pod. That's awesome. Just in case the captain just decides, I'm done. Um. That would be kind of funny, middle of the night. There's an emergency. What's the problem? The captain's escape pod is launched. There's nothing going on. Nope, he just said he was done. Um, seems like a bad idea to give a captain that kind of ability. <laughs> I thought the captain was supposed to go down with his ship, not have a personal escape pod. <laughs> uh, pilot quarters. So this is your fighter pilot quarter. They get, they get a cooler room, I guess, with a table and stuff. 
so that's cool. Uh, and up this away, we have an airlock for something. That might actually just be an airlock. Yeah, looks like it is. It's just an exterior airlock. And I got a little turn around. Where was that other door? There it is. Okay, so now we should be on the bridge. There we are. And we've got lights, air vents, lockdown. I gotta, I gotta try that at some point. A very nice bridge with a very nice view. Where's this go? Is this an exterior airlock area? Yeah. That's severe escape pods when you just need to jump out of the ship. Um, all right, what we got here? Rocket launchers, front, port, starboard, ship lockdown, activate and deactivate, turrets, all, camera, backup antennas, main reactors, lots of stuff. Hangar blast doors. Oh! Okay, so that's something I want to try, actually, if they're not already extended. Oh, that's cool. There's a whole glass ceiling that I missed. That's a pretty cool little addition there. I really like that bridge. Um, okay, so it was seven. Should be the hangar blast door pistons. Not on the front, though. On the side? Ah, there they are. So that's pretty cool. It's like a double security to protect the actual hangar door blocks. That's kind of neat. I like that. Not seeing them on the front, though. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and where was... That's the front. That just turns them on and off, I guess. The missile launch, the rocket launchers. That doesn't actually fire them, it looks like. So let's try the lockdown thing. I gotta see what this does. Anything? Anything noticeable? Oh, because I actually toggled the blocks? That's retracting the blast doors. Whoops. Um, I'm surprised that this isn't, like, sealing up, though. I'm not really sure what that does, to be honest. Probably would make more sense if I, like, read up on it, but oh well. Um, in terms of speed, this is a vanilla build, and thus its speed isn't all that great, because it's not using modded thrusters or anything like that that give you that extra oomph. Uh, but it seems okay for a assault carrier type thing. Slowing is gonna obviously take a minute, and turning's a little on the sluggish side, but again, it's a assault carrier, so it kind of makes sense. So I think that's gonna do it for this one. Let's move on to the next one. Alrighty, so next up we have... <laughs> I don't know what, every, everybody's just... everybody hates me with these names. Muntjack, I think? Muntjack? I'm not, I'm not sure how you're supposed to say that. I'm probably butchering it. So let's just assume I am and move on. Um, this is a really cool build. Now, I do have to point out two things. One, um, the I read some of the comments because I, str I tried to paste this in a couple of times and it just kept breaking no matter what I tried. I tried to be as careful and as low to the ground as I could. It just didn't seem to matter. Um, but I was reading some of the comments on the workshop file, which the author expressed that some of the changes in the latest update of the game have made certain blocks a lot more brittle, or it seemed to be anyway. I don't know if that's actually accurate or not, but it made sense since everything seems to be breaking when I paste it in. Um, so there's that, and on top of that, to get that to get this to work properly and not have any headaches, I did turn off block damage. Um, on this world file at the moment. It is a blueprint, but on the save that I started it with this build paste in, I turned that off ahead of time. So bear that in mind, that if you try and paste this in, it, it was very tricky to paste in, and I never could get it without just exploding, basically. Like, everything just fell apart whenever I would paste it in, no matter how I tried to do it. So I don't I'm kind of in line with thinking it's probably something that happened in the new update that made the pasting, you know, uh, made the impact tolerance lower or something. I don't know. 
Uh, so just keep that in mind that everything on this particular build is with damage turned off. So if you try and paste it in on a world that doesn't have that, you may or may not have the same results and you might have a lot of problems. Um, that said, how awesome is this though? I mean, seriously, this is, this is really cool. It's got like its own working tread type thing. And I do want to point out the destruction part did seem to be from pasting it in. I never got far enough to try it out uh, with the actual mechanics with the destruction on. As far as I know, it's supposed to work fine and it's not supposed to actually break anything. So I'm guessing that's all from the new update. But just this kind of stuff, like the extended, well actually not extended, but having it mounted on pistons and rotors and stuff like that. It's just crazy. Crazy talk. So this should be the front ramp. Glad I had damage off. That thing looked like it would have busted. And it actually has an interior, which was unexpected to me, but really, really cool. Um, so yeah, we've got a bathroom over here. It is vanilla, if my memory serves as well. Um, we've got a little kitchen. This looks to be, I don't know, a shelf, a sink? I'm not really sure. And then this is the bunks. In the, in the background over here. This is also classified as a heavy exploration vessel. Ooh, pretty lights. We all know how much I love LCD stuff and scripts and screens and... <laughs> I mean, I could go on. Emergency power. I guess that's a small reactor. We've got also a little scout drone. It's it's like it's got its own little drone thing, which is cool. Cargo, cargo door, spotlights. Uh oh, I meant to do that. I know what I'm doing. No, I don't at all. Um, oh, something's something's stuck. Can I help it? Get that door open. There we go. Oh, okay. So these are the spotlights. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm not really sure why that door was stuck or wedged or whatever. Wow, that's actually really bright. I mean, they are spotlights. You wouldn't really want dim ones, I guess. Let's turn those off. That is so cool! That is awesome. And then we get this cool thing. I guess it's a little scout drone. I'm not really sure what other classification it would fall under with a connector attached to it. Come on, let me in. Thank you. So that's pretty sweet, and it's got some Gatling guns on it. Fun stuff. I do want to drive this thing around more, to, more than anything, though. I want to see how the driving works. Supposedly, it's using a script um, that lets you control with uh, the WASD keys. And we've got a control layout here, automatic forward, so it's like an auto drive, and so you don't have to hold the button down. Actually, I think this would be kind of cool um, in terms of you could click the button and then get out. Excuse me. And you could walk around while your vehicle's driving. Uh, view 360 camera. What? What is this? <gasps> Ooh, it's on a swivel. Oh, that's cool. Investigation is required. I mean, that's a fairly simple idea. It shouldn't be too complicated to implement, but that's still really cool. Camera spotlight. Um, I'm not seeing a spotlight. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay. Uh, big spotlights. Turrets, cargo doors, front ramp, reboot system, release track locks. Ew. Um, so are track locks enabled then? Maybe? Let's try it. What was it? Nine? So track rock, track locks released. Oh, that's so cool though. Look at it go. That is so awesome. I love it. And I'm guessing the rotors for the pistons that are attaching the legs is where you get the WASD controls. It is! Dude! Okay, let's just get one thing out of the way. How do you come up with this stuff? Like, I mean, I'm proud of myself when I build a ship that doesn't blow up. This is, like, intense, though. That is so awesome. Now, all of the 
the noise, I don't know, like I said, without the damage... Well, with the damage turned on, I don't know if that would actually be damaging anything, or if that's just the sound effects that it's making. But that is so awesome! It actually controls... like a tank! I could just, I could just watch this all day. It's great. Um, yeah. I have no idea how this works, but it's awesome. So I encourage you, if you're interested, to kind of like, you probably download it and reverse engineer that kind of thing, see how all the, everything's set, because this is some cool stuff. This is, especially for vanilla, without any kind of modded um, extras or anything, this is some, this is some next level type tankery here. So yeah, that's going to do it for this one, I think. So let's move on to the last one. So last up, we have the PZK Bohemia. Hey, I think I actually got that one right. Go figure. <laughs> Anyways, so this is, according to the description, referred to as a Temple Class Destroyer, I guess. Um, not too sure what a Temple Class Destroyer is as opposed to a Destroyer, but Destroyer is fairly self-explanatory. I don't think anybody really needs a big definition on what that means. Um, overall, I thought this was a kind of interesting ship because it's one of the first ships that I've seen with a hammerhead-like design that wasn't actually a recreation of the Star Wars Old Republic, um, hammerhead cruisers. Um, so yeah, at first I was thinking, oh, that's kind of like a, must be like a smaller version or something, and then I was like, no, I haven't seen something that looks like this before. And after reading the description, I realized it wasn't really based on the Star Wars one at all. So overall, I thought that was kind of a cool idea. Plus, there was some interesting little design things on the inside in terms of interior. Again, this is a vanilla, uh, vanilla build. And thus, um, everything is, well, vanilla. I think. Some things like the textures and things like that for LCDs, I don't know if that can be added without there being... Um, yeah, without, without it actually being, um, modded, if there's a different way to do that, or if these may actually be, they may actually be default vanilla textures, I don't know. Um, so, yeah. Unfortunately for me, not really unfortunate in general though, it does seem like most of this, other than this little memorial thing here, may be in a different language. But, I mean, I don't care how you spell it, Reactor is fairly self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, some of this we're going to have to kind of figure out on our own, I suppose. Um, this must be some kind of production area because that's the efficiency upgrade modules for refineries and assemblers. So I'm guessing, and this is our inventory readout, so I'm guessing, you know... And that says assembler. It's fairly... Ooh, there's a remote block? What are you here for? Hmm. Suspicious. But, like, this kind of thing? Love this. This looks really cool. Uh, we got green Ma M Masters LCD stuff plus these textures and then this green projector thing of a reactor, which is cool. I'm wondering if that's actually supposed to be projecting whether the reactor's on or off. Like, if it turns on? Does that turn to green lights or something? I'm not really sure. But that's kind of neat. One way or another, I think that's pretty cool. Alright, let's see what goes this way. Ooh! A glass roof! I mean, it's no real secret that, you know, you earn like 50 brownie points with me when you do anything in glass. Find an obscure landing zone for lander, build shelter and mining camp, explore, build space elevator with docking ring to orbital fleet. It's, that's pretty, uh, pretty ambitious. Um, alright, so this goes down further. I really didn't think there was this much space inside here. Um, oh, okay, so this is the lander type ship with complete with landing gears and I have seen these lately which is kind of cool they're like pistons with a tire on them for essentially landing dampening you kind of extend those out and then land and the the tire kind of takes up some of absorbs some of the impact shock 
and then you can retract the piston until it's within range that the landing gears can lock it down. So that's a pretty cool technique to use um, for landing. And then obviously the hangar door, which will undoubtedly lead outside so that you can, I don't know, actually land on something with the lander. Uh, what goes up here? Cargo containers with and a room with a view. And by the way, this always freaks me out when there's like a ledge out there. It always makes me feel like you're supposed to be able to walk out there and then when you hit the window you're like, oh, okay. I don't know if anybody else has that happen, but it happens to me all the time. Um, okay, so here's our glass area. I'm guessing this is supposed to be an equivalent to hydroponics because there's no real area for the solar or the oxygen farms to actually get sunlight from. And I read somewhere that if they're behind windows, it doesn't matter. They don't actually charge anything anyway, which is weird. I don't get that at all, but that's the way it is, apparently. Okay. So we did those. We did that area. So there's down this way. What goes up this way, though? Apparently this is just like a standing speaking platform, maybe? Uh, we've got the cryo chambers, a med bay, programmable blocks, uh, reactors. Wake up! Wake up message, I guess. Um, oh, more cryo chambers. Okay, so that's what that's supposed to be, I guess. Wait a minute. Where's the bridge? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I missed the door somewhere. I had to. Where's the bridge? Uh, okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ah, here it is. Well, here's the part I missed anyway. And this leads to... Wait. What is that? Oh, an arc furnace. Man, I have not used those enough. I really don't recognize them when I see them. Okay, so arc furnace there. Uh, oh, this is the other walkway, I guess. I thought they went to the same place. Apparently they do not. That's what I get for assuming. Uh, this actually does end up leading to the same place, but this is the other side, I guess, over here, which is not exactly the same thing. Okay, and then we go up here to another med bay, another arc furnace. <laughs> See, got it that time. <clears throat> um, and what appears to be the main bridge with a very intricate LCD setup, which is really cool looking and very complicated looking and amazing and awesome. Um, what goes up here though, if that's the main bridge? Oh! There's more. Okay, okay. So this is, I don't know, I guess war room type thing? Not to be mistaken for a ward room, like last time. <clears throat> Which I did actually get quite a few comments on that that is a thing. Um, <laughs> I was thinking it was a typo or a language translation or something, but no, nope, no, nope, ward room is a thing. I apparently, I was apparently just ignorant of it. So, yeah. Um, so let's check out this really, really cool bridge setup here. That's really neat. Some of these are a little hard to read distance wise and font size wise, but they're not too bad. Um, but I really like the uh, appearance, like the setup and stuff looks really, really cool. Uh, we've got rocket launchers, jump drives, and it looks like that may be it for controls. It is. Oops. Okay. So where are these rocket launchers? Ooh. So we have three rocket launchers in the front. I'm guessing the rest of the damage dealing is coming from turrets that look to be kind of peppered all over the top of the ship. In terms of speed, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What is, what is going on? I look like a transformer. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to chalk that up to new update, essentially. Because that's what I'm thinking is this is probably a glitch from the new update. 
is everything looks like a transformer. Um, I would blame it on mods, but there's none on this. So, yeah. Tran uh, yeah. New update. Turns your ship into a transformer. <laughs> um, Speed-wise, though, it actually goes pretty well. Slowing down, that's kind of common of vanilla uh, builds at this point. That uh, Slow deceleration, let's be accurate here, is a little bit um, hindered by some of the changes that are made to the newer updates. Turning's not too bad, though, for a big destroyer-type ship. Uh, overall, I really thought this was a cool one. I really like it. So I think that's going to wrap things up for us today. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.